Good afternoon everybody. Physics IGCSE Term 2. This is our second session of Term 2 in the first week. We are talking about the calculation of moments and what is a moment? A moment of a force. A moment of a force is the turning effect of a force. If you have a pivot here and a beam here and you have an upward force here and this is fixed over here, this force will turn this beam that way. Okay? And the moment of the force, the actual moment, is it may be calculated by the force if this is 10 newtons and this is uh, 6 meters, then we've got a moment of 10 times 6 is equal to 60, 60 newton meters. And that's how we calculate moments. So we can get various um, questions based on this, all based on um, the idea that this can be in equilibrium. So if we have a beam like this, or it could be a seesaw or a ruler or anything, and we have forces, uh, random forces uh, pressing down on here, uh, these different forces may not be in equilibrium. So this may or may not be turning. It may turn that way, it may turn that way. Or it may not. If it is turning, it's not in equilibrium. But we can move these forces around to balance this. And once it's balanced, then the clockwise moment will be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. And two moments being equal means there's no resultant uh, force. Okay? So when it's balanced, then we say the, the total or the sum of the um, clockwise moments is equal to the total anti clockwise. Moments. And there we have an equation, and this equation we can use only if the system is balanced. So either they'll tell you it's balanced, or they'll say balance it. When you finish balancing it, it's balanced. When they say balance it, you'll find that there's, there's one, probably one, either one unknown force here, or one unknown distance from the pivot here, that you have to determine with this equation. And then it will be balanced if you use the equation. So um, we can use this equation to solve problems. If you have a look at um, example 4.1, 4.1 gives you a diagram there, and then from the diagram you get this equation, so which is uh, 20 newtons multiplied by. 0 0.5 meters plus 10 newtons uh, multiplied by 1.5 meters and this is equal to a force times 4.5 meters okay so we're going to calculate the, the uh, brackets first. It's force times distance of the one force, force times distance of the other force, and um, don't forget this 1.5 meters. You have to add the two distances because this force is 0.5 from the pivot. This force is. I think it's, it's about one from this force, but it's still, this force is also a distance 
away from the pivot. So you have to add the two distances. So we multiply this, we get 10 Newton meters plus 1.5 is 15 Newton meters, which is equal to 4.5 multiplied by F. So now we can solve this, we can add this up. This is 25 Newton meters, which is equal to 4.5 times the force. So to get this 4.5 to this side, we have to divide both sides by 4.5. You should know how to do this from your math, but um, for those of you that are not used to working with equations, this is how you manipulate equations. These two cancel and you're left with 25 over 4.5 equal to F. And this you can work out in the calculator or you can work it out in your head. And this is Newton's because it's a force. Okay. That's how you use these equations. They'll either give you one with, with one distance move missing or one force missing. But there's always only one thing missing. In this case, this force is unknown. <clears throat> Question 4.3 in the course book you uh, can have a look at. We're going to uh, work through that now. Um, we have a beam here. I'm not exactly sure what they call it in the course book, but it's a beam or a seesaw or whatever. And we have a force down here, a force that they call X. And there's a force down here, which is 400 newtons. And the distance over here between this pivot and that force is 2.5 meters. And this, the other distance is 1.0 meters. From here to here. Okay, this is from here to here. Okay. And then they've got another force here going up here, which they call Y. And this force they refer to as the upward contact force. Don't worry about this in the first part of the question. First calculate x using this information. Because this is the information that goes into the equation. So we got the, the this will be a clockwise moment. Because it's going to, an anti-clockwise moment. So it's going to turn it that way. So the anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise is equal to the clockwise moment, the sum of, but there is only one on each side. So this is 1.0x is equal to 2.5 times 400. Therefore x is equal to 2.5 times 400 over 1. So x is equal to 1,000 newtons. <clears throat> so this is a force here of 1,000 newtons. Now, we know what the total downward force on this beam is. It's 1000 newtons and 400 newtons, and it's in equilibrium. So these two are pressing down in the same direction because this thing's not turning because it's in equilibrium, it's balanced. So I'm going to, I'm going to rub out this now, and now I'm going to say that um, the total upward is equal to total downward. Okay? And what is the upward force? There's only one force upward, it's Y. Y. 
And Y is the force that stops this whole system from falling down. Okay? Even if this was standing on the ground, if there was no force Y, this would be pressed through the ground. Y is equal to 1000 plus 400. Because this is not only, we finished talking about equilibrium in the clockwise and anti clockwise moments. We are now talking about equilibrium in the up and down direction. So that's why y is then equal to 1400 Newton upwards. Remember, the force is a vector and um, it's always got a direction and you must specify the direction of your force. We know that it's going upwards because it's like that on the diagram. But um, you, you, you will lose marks if you don't write a vector with a magnitude and a direction. All vectors and forces are vectors, all forces are magnitude and direction. Okay, now um, you can now do uh, exercise 4.2 in the workbook and then also um, uh, questions 1 to 3 in the end of chapter exercises or in the chapter questions and we'll see you in the next session thank you